Okay, folks, we're going to play around with some uh, projection and coordinate system stuff. And if you go to our Canvas page here in the Files section and Data, you will see a folder called CO2 Emissions. And inside here, we've got a bunch of shape files, and there's an important text file. It's a table that we'll be playing with. So to make this easier, go back out to the main data thing. We've got CO2 emissions here. Hit these three dots hanging over to the side and hit download. Then I will hit save. I'm going to find it in my own thing here and as always just to keep this stuff simple I'm going to go into documents go into ArcGIS uh, and I will drag this right here right click go to 7-zip extract here let's see how that worked gorgeous all right and I can just right click and delete this original zip file I don't need it anymore so I have the CO2 emissions file. And I see one thing that could be an issue, and that's the fact that I left a space in here. So I'm going to slowly double click, and I'm just going to get rid of that. And I'm also, in fact, while I'm doing this, so you guys don't have to Let's do that, or I'll do an underscore so it looks cooler there. Now you guys don't have to worry about it, and just because I'm a little OCD about this stuff, I'll make it match. Okay, so now in here we have all of those files, okay? So make sure you download and unzip that, and then let's go into our Windows Realm, our area. We're going to go down to ArcGIS, open up ArcMap. And we'll bring this stuff in and I'll, I'll show you what we have. Okay. And to keep it simple and clear, I'm going to uh, expand this here. And typically I'd have you guys come into catalog and do this stuff. But this time, because I don't think we, I, don't, I can't remember if we did this last time or not. Um, but let's do this add data button up here. We're going to head to our documents, CO2 emissions, and we're going to add these three things. So we have this country shape file, so it's a polygon shape file of the entire world. This lat long one to just give us our cool uh, latitude and longitude lines. And then neat line, I'll explain what that is when we bring it in. And this world underscore CO2 dot TXT, that's a table. And so we'll, uh, we'll look at that. So just select all of them, hit add. And if it does look like this, um, had a few things going on. Number one, in the table of contents, uh, note that it's this list by source that shows up here. So if I wanted to drag and change stuff, I can't do it. It gives me that little circle with the line through it. And that's because I brought in this table, this text file right here. So if I want to move these so I can see what I have, I now click over here, list by drawing order, and you note that that table disappears. It's still there. We just can't see it because that table isn't something that's actually drawn. Okay? Um, so neat line, that's what we want on the bottom. So we drag it to the back so it'll be drawn first and as I always like to do drag the latitude and longitude lines and put them uh, underneath the countries okay and so you can see what we have in this neat line file this layer uh, neat line is a cartography term and it it uh, refers to a not a border of the map itself but of the the map uh, material or, or data or whatever. So I made this thing so that our uh, 
uh, when we start playing with projections, it's basically so everything will look nice. It's kind of this aesthetic thing, and you'll you'll see what I mean when we get into that. Um, so we got that there, and first move, as always, when I've done something and I'm pleased with myself, is I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to put this uh, into my documents, ArcGIS, and CO2 emissions. And I'll just call this, I don't know, working, because that's what I do. That's my convention. You call it whatever you want. But there, I've got it saved, so I don't have to start from square one uh, if something goes horribly wrong. Uh, so I got these here, kind of ugly default colors, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, and then I also, if I click back here in that list by source, Look at that table. Go ahead and right click on that and hit open. And what you'll see here is the name of the country, this three letter code. And then these are the CO2 emissions uh, by kiloton. And that's the, the unit that's being used. So we're looking at how much CO2 was pumped into the atmosphere uh, back in the year 2014. That's the newest, latest data that we have right to, to get a sense of who are the the greater polluters around the world um so that's what we got and this table these data actually come from i'll show you i just have to do this um these are world bank data uh i don't think i mentioned this last time when i was talking about data but in the writing i do mention uh the world bank it's this technically international agency, um, although we in the U.S. have a big part of this thing, and they loan money to other countries. Uh, and one thing they do in an effort to know if they should be loaning money to uh, countries is they study uh, a lot of countries to get a sense of you know, how well they're doing, what could be improved, and, and all of that. So they have at data.worldbank.org, uh, they have a whole host of things that you can utilize uh, and so that's where I got this I downloaded it as a uh, comma separated values file and then I simplified it a lot so that it would work easily in ArcGIS and later on we're gonna play around with tables we'll get a sense of uh, how some of this stuff works how to best bring these tables in but I just wanted to show you this is where I got the data from and if you scroll down you can see the information is there it's just not in a very ArcGIS friendly format but we can see it here we can make a map we can do that stuff but we're going to take it further we're going to do our own map because we're able to download uh, the data right, let me see if I can find my oh did I close my oh no it's there okay we're cool don't panic all right um so we got this here again we have the uh, data here um, and so we're going to <clears throat> join this that's the official term we're going to perform a join using this code right here so that's the three capital letters for each country and then if we right click and open that attribute table we have a few different options but we're going to use this gmi underscore country code here and that should match up right now i'm just i'm telling you this stuff i'm not making you learn it so you might legitimately be questioning well you know why am i doing this how do i know this is what i'm supposed to do right now i'm just gonna tell you this is how it works and then when we get into tables and really mess with that stuff uh, i'll show you guys how to figure this out. I'll explain what it is we're really doing. For now though, let's just uh, let's just get this done with so we can get to the uh, projection and coordinate stuff. All right, and you also, I guess, another thing you could note uh, as well is that we do not have uh, any of that year 2014 CO2 emissions data. We've got a lot of stuff in here, but it's not, we don't have our CO2 emissions so if I right click here and I go to joins and relates and join get this window that pops up 
I only have one table in here at the moment, so it's the only one that that uh, shows up here. It automatically puts it in there. Uh, but from here, this first one, this is where I pick that GMI underscore country field. Uh, and then it's going to automatically, it's going to put name here, but that's wrong. We want this one that was code, which is, again, that matching three-digit code. This keep all records, validate join, all that stuff. You can just leave it as is and then hit OK. And here's the ridiculous thing. It did it, uh, but it doesn't tell you that it did it. Right? You don't get some clear like thumbs up or anything like that. Really, the way to check it is you can read the table or we can use this identify tool, so the blue circle and the white eye. And if we click on Brazil here, we have all that stuff from the table for Brazil, but perfect. We go down here and we have Y 2014 and we've got our CO2 emission so it actually worked okay all right so we got that let's hit save okay so now what this means is that all of these countries have uh, the data in there and instead of having this boring table uh, looking at that uh, we want to display it we want to actually make a map that shows um, you know, the the data, right? That's the whole point of these maps, that we don't want to read the stuff. We want to see it. We want that nice visual graphic design. So let's right-click on Country 04. I'm down to Properties. I'm going to show you how we can do this, what we can do here, and this will look pretty slick. So in the layer properties, make sure the symbology tab is selected. If you have something else that pops up, just select symbology. And then we want to select quantities okay, right here. And so with quantities, this allows us to make what we call a choropleth map, which is a fancy way of uh, saying what this little example of uh, Northern Africa looks like so this isn't our data it's just they throw in a picture of some random stuff uh, to kind of like jog our memory or let us know what it is we're doing so this isn't actually on our map uh, but we're gonna make our map look kinda like that right and so the idea with a choropleth map is we have a standard unit of, of uh, division here like countries or counties or continents or something like that and then we have the data value, in our case, CO2 emissions. And so we're going to map using color how, how much is being emitted. And the general rule of thumb is we show more as a darker color and less as a lighter color. All right? We can reverse that if we want, but quite often it's, it's harder for our eyes to to distinguish this and really and, and for our brains to understand what's going on. So always, I would say for now until you really know enough to start breaking the rules, uh, always make sure the the higher the value, the darker the color. Okay? And I'll show you what I mean right here. So all we need to do is uh, under value with the drop down, and then these are the possible fields from our attribute table that we can base uh, this map on base these colors on right so we come down here to year 2014 it automatically populates it with our values in here uh, and so our range so from 11 kilotons to what is that 211,369.547 that's a light yellow uh, and then above that it's a darker yellow and then orange and then there's brown and so on so again it's light for less dark for more and if you don't like this color scheme uh, I actually kind of like it because it's pollution so this default one um, works but if you hit the drop down you can select from a variety of things all right now what in fact let me let me do this first let me hit apply and show you what happens 
So we can see here right away, and this is why using these maps, so I'd say a powerful thing. We can see that China is the largest emitter of uh, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Uh, we are a close second right here. Um, and that, of course, you know, there, well, there's all sorts of stuff there. One of the reasons why we're a lot lower is because we sent a lot of our polluting stuff over here. So they do our dirty work for us. It's pretty slick move. Um, but there you go. So we have our two big emitters of CO2. And then you can see these oranges. It's, it's um, you know, kind of in the middle there. And it gets a little lighter and then less and so on. Right? So, so we're seeing here, we're starting to get a story. We're starting to see the data. Uh, one thing, though, if you look, Western Sahara here disappears. Um, probably a few others have disappeared, and that's because we have no data for these countries. So they just vanish. And we don't want to leave it like that, so we'll, we'll uh, uh, fix it. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, but I first want to warn you, uh, so we have what we call a bicolor, or not a bicolor, sorry, a single color progression or single hue progression, uh, which is like this going from a light yellow to a dark brown. It's all this, these nice complementary colors, right? Or like this green right here. We can hit that, and again, we get darker, lighter. It makes sense. I personally, if I'm making a map of pollution and carbon emissions, I don't want to have a nice green thing. You want to think about the psychology uh, of these colors, right? What you're trying to show. So I kind of like that yellow to brown. It was ugly. And so uh, uh, that kind of works. But you can, you know, play around with these, see what comes out, see what you like, play around with the other colors of things, and go from there. Now, one thing I'll warn you about uh, we have these, this is a bicolor progression. If I hit apply, uh, and so it's we have the least amount is the darkest of one shade, in this case green, and then it goes to a lighter green, and then it transitions to a lighter blue, and then another lighter blue, and then a dark blue for the most. Sometimes this is useful. I think for something as simple as how much CO2 is being emitted, doesn't really, um, you know, necessarily makes sense. It also, with this, uh, uh, these values here, it's not, yeah, I know, like uh, um, these darker green countries are necessarily um, not harming the environment or anything like that. So it might be kind of misleading to use one of these. Uh, another scheme we sometimes use is like, it's like a, a thermometer, right? The blue going to red, kind of thinking, you know, cold to medium, to hot. So that works for certain data, not necessarily this one here, right? And so let's just, I'll just do this to, actually, no, I don't like it. Let's see again, 2OC here, we'll do that for now. Um, so play around with that, find something you like. Another thing to do is if you come over to the label side, um, it's really ugly. Right, because we have these six decimal places here. We should fix that. It's hard to read. So if you right click over here, it doesn't matter which one, you can right click on any of these uh, and go to format labels, number of decimal places, drop that down to one. Because come on, we don't need to get that crazy. Another useful thing uh, is this show thousand separators. It puts the comma in every three digit so it'll make it a little easier to read uh, we're not worried about negative or positive values so we don't need that show plus sign uh, also if we were messing around with something where we're showing the amount of money each country has or the percentage of something like the percentage of co2 emissions to people you know who live there or something like that we could play around with this and we can get things that look better so this is a way to make Ultimately, when we make our legend, it will look a lot better. But I'm just going to leave this like this, hit OK, and you can see it's a lot easier to read. It was from 11 to, and now it's much clearer that it's 211,369.5. It just rounds, right? And then we have 
six. So it's just going to look better. And if I hit apply, you'll note up here in the table of contents, it, it fixes that as well. All right. And then finally, another thing you can do is you can click on these. Not saying you have to, um, but if you want to play around with this stuff, if you don't quite like this color, maybe I want it to be more of like a gray color for whatever reason, I can do that, hit apply. It makes that change, but it leaves everything else the same, right? I can also, if I don't like this default gray, maybe I want it darker, maybe I want to kind of play around with like a reddish color here, I can do that. And if I hit apply, you can see the red is there. So it's a way to make it all look a little different, a little less default, right? Um, so play around with that stuff. Okay, I'm just going to leave this as is. Uh, the neat line, just, you know, this you can do whatever you want. Uh, what typically makes sense is you pick some bluish color, put that in, um, so it looks like the ocean itself, because this is the extent of the entire world the lat long you can get that to match you could have a, a darker blue you know like that so it goes neatly and nicely together you can also which is kind of slick looking you can do white as well in fact even make this a little darker and these are there's no necessarily right way to do it play around with this stuff um, but as we start to play with the coordinate systems and projections this latitude and longitude stuff will be important. It will be useful. Okay, uh, so play around with that. Get it to look from a, a color perspective the way you like it. From an aesthetic perspective, make sure you hit save often. Um, but then when you're done with this, and I'll just pretend this looks good, even though it's offensive uh, to my eyes. Um, once you've done this, you're ready to play with the coordinate system, with the projection. Right now, this is an ugly map, and it's because it's in this geographic coordinate system. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that uh, in a moment, but it just looks dumpy. It's kind of sagging. Like, look, just the U.S. looks flat and saggy, and I don't like it. Greenland is this big blob up here. It's a mess. So this is just unattractive, uh, but it's the default. It's what this stuff comes in as. Okay, and in fact, with these countries, oh, and let's, I forgot, let's fix this Western Sahara thing. So here's the easiest way to do that. I'm going to right click on it. I like this. Hit copy. And then up here, I tell you what, what I need to do is also come in here to list by drawing order. Okay, so we'll hit copy here. And then layers, uh, hit paste layers, and I'm going to get two of these. But with this one on the bottom, I'm going to right click and go to properties. Let's pull up. And then I'm just going to bring it right back here to features, single symbol. And I'm going to change this to kind of a default gray, maybe that one. I'll hit OK and hit OK. Oh, and Antarctica, you can see that vanished. Um, oh, this is like Svalbard or whatever up here, gone. So we have a few things that, that come back. We just had no data. And I'm going to rename this. I just clicked on it once inside there. And I'm going to rename this no data and keep it underneath the other one. So that way, these countries don't disappear because it's a rookie move not to have this stuff there, right? You have this big gap here. Um, but it's because and if I click on it and drag it down, you can see this null value for that Y2014. We don't have data for Western Sahara, so it couldn't actually draw anything, right? It doesn't know to put it in this gray, you know, these different reds or, or whatever. So this is just a way, a quick, dirty way to make this work, okay? And I'm going to hit save again. Uh, then I'm going to right click on layers and I'm going to go to properties. Okay. And so this layers thing, this is called a data frame and we can actually go and we can add data frames. Um, 
So that way we could have multiple maps on the same sheet of paper. If you want to think of it that way, we'll play around with that a little bit. Um, and so in here, this kind of also controls everything else that's going on. Uh, like if you wanted to turn the background, I don't know, black, we'll just pick that one and hit apply. It'll get the, the rest of the screen, the stuff that's behind the map itself, it'll change a color. And they give you these weird options here. If you don't like them, that's fine. Just pick one and then you can change the stuff out here, right? And it'll it'll work. You can do whatever you want. So that's that's a way to mess with that. And you don't have to. You can leave it white. Do whatever you, you want to do there. Well, what's important for us today is this coordinate system tab. And as I mentioned in the, uh, the lecture component, ESRI, the, the company who does ArcGIS, they've kind of lumped together the whole coordinate system datum projection concept. So the whole thing falls into this coordinate system idea. Now currently, ours is in this geographic coordinate system, that's what the CGS is, and then it's the World Geodetic System of 1984. So it's a very simple, easy to draw thing effectively and that's kind of why it looks so dumpy so this is great for just storing data not so good for uh, making nice maps or having some attractive finished product so if you scroll around see so here's this world thing I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna close this this is in the geographic coordinate systems folder just never use that it's it's not good for what we want to do in here. So we always want to change stuff to this projected coordinate systems folder. And depending on what kind of map we're doing, uh, it'll determine where we go in here, right? Like continental, if I'm making a map simply of Africa or Europe or South America or whatever, I can go in here and I have some, some good possibilities. So like going back to that South America map we made, I think I set it in one of these, but Maybe I didn't. Maybe I was lazy. Um, but that would be a, a thing to do. You could select it there so your South America looks good. Okay? If I want to do a map of the North or South Pole, we have those those polar mnemonic uh, maps that I, I talked about. With the, again, the lecture component. So that would be good. Um, state systems. This gets into like California. Um, specifically, and I think they now have, yeah, this NAD 1983, California Teal Albers. That, as far as I know, is still what the state of California uses for all of their official maps. So we have a lot of stuff in here. Because we're doing a map of the world, we're going to stick with this world stuff, and we're not going to use this sphere-based thing because we know the Earth is not a sphere. So we're going to come in here, and I want you guys to experiment with these things and think about what it is we're trying to show like here's the mercator um, projection that i spoke of and i'll hit apply and you can start in fact i'll just hit okay here and zoom out you can start to see that distortion of which i spoke where it just stretches stuff out like crazy right uh, also these the standard line or line of tangency uh, is running along the equator here so that's where there's no too little distortion but then if you look at these little grid squares by the latitude and longitude lines they start to get stretched out the further up you go and that again is because the the uh, angle the shape is good they're crossing at 90 degree angle so shape is good but size is off remember greenland up here is my hand greenland right here is the same size as mexico in reality clearly that's not the case on this specific map right so if i'm trying to show the amount of co2 being emitted i have this cool um uh cool map of uh showing the emissions just the number of uh, kilotons being released but it also kind of shrinks china down right here it doesn't 
doesn't uh, uh, make it look like it's that big of a deal because we have some of these bigger, less polluting countries here. It kind of looks like this is a small little anomaly in a much larger world. So I don't want something like this conformal map. Again, I don't care about the shape of China, but it would be good to keep the size of China um, true compared to the rest of the world, right? To just give us a better sense of not only how much is being polluted, but how big a country are we talking about, right? I think that would be more useful. So again, right click here, go to properties. So think about what I was talking about in that lecture. Do some uh, research on some of these if you uh, um, you know don't know exactly what they are. Here's the sinusoidal, which I did talk about. I'll hit apply and OK. And so remember, this is where it's not conformal. So the shape is screwed up, um, but the size is pretty good. Greenland and Mexico are pretty good. So size is good, but it's also a weird frankly a funky looking uh, map there so play around try to find something that works that gets you this nice final product and so once you've got all of this the right color it looks the way you want it to you've got the right coordinate system of course first hit save but then come down here into layout view okay and because it's a map of the world probably want to right click out here in the the white Go to page and print setup, and I'm going to switch it to landscape. I'm also going to hit this scale map element so it's a little easier to resize. And then I can just drag this out, or if I want precise measurements, you can left click up here and it'll snap to that little blue guideline right there. And if you accidentally do these wrong, you can move them over and then snap it, or if you do it, where you put one too many, you're not happy, you can right click up here and hit clear guide or clear all guides and just do it on your own. But make this layout like we have right here. Um, get it symbolized just the way you want it, zoom in to where you want it, center it, and so on. Um, and then I want you to make sure you insert a legend. Okay, and as you go through here, this legend wizard, if you haven't messed with it, it's an obnoxious thing. Um, but that's why you should play with it. Um, this will be the things that are in the legend itself. This is everything you have in the map. This is what you're going to put in the legend. Uh, I don't really need to know what the lat long is, what the neat line is, and all that. So I can hit this over arrow, and I can get rid of it. But these other things could be useful. If I hit next, there we go. Uh, you must delete this right here. I had a great cartography professor, very cranky man, uh, so this is the stupidest thing in the world. And you know what? I agree with the guy. Um, you never put legend on top of your legend, just like you wouldn't put map on top of your map, or you don't put pants on your pants. Like, we know what this stuff is. So legend title, just get rid of that. You don't need it. It should be obvious, right? Um, hit next. You can play around with this border stuff. I usually don't mess with it at all. Just kind of quickly went through there so you can see what's going on. And so we have our values and the color, and you know, our no data one is also included in here. Fantastic. That way I know what these numbers actually mean. But I don't want to have the CNTRY04 and Y2014 um, right there. But what's cool is if I click in here and I rename it, and so I do something like CO2 emissions about by country and hit enter, it automatically fixes it over here, right? Uh, I can also put in parentheses, something like that, if I wanted to, or I could just delete that. There are also other ways if you right click in here and go to properties. Uh, in here, there are ways, and they changed it a little bit. I'm trying to remember, let's see if I go into symbol. 
on. See, it's moving slowly, which makes me very nervous. Um, because it means it's going to crash. Oh, here we go. Style. That's what I want. Hit properties. General. Show layer name. That's our CO2 emissions by country. Show heading is this 2014. And show labels here are the actual values. So I could just uncheck this and hit OK and OK. And I get an apply. And you see that 2014 disappears. So there are different ways to mess with that experiment with this thing um, but do give me uh, a legend okay another thing don't give me a north arrow if your map looks like this because these lines of longitude the vertical lines they're going pointing north right but if i put a north arrow here and you'll note it will let me okay if i do something like this um it's saying north is at the top of the page. And I can move this anywhere. It means north is to the top here. If I move it here, it's to the top here, and so on. But these lines of longitude actually mean that north is going in this direction. So north is not consistent with this specific map projection, right? Or coordinate system, as they say. If I go in here and I pick something like Mercator, let's go back to that, and I hit OK. Now this actually does make sense because north is going to the top of the page everywhere for the entire world, right? So always look at these longitude lines and think, do I need a north arrow uh, in this case? It's the same thing with the scale bar. I warned about the Mercator projection, the scale down here at the equator, very different from up here in the Arctic or down in the Antarctic. So you wouldn't want to put a scale bar either, right? Because ArcGIS just it's not we're not making this map to sail around the world we're just making it to show these carbon emissions okay so I want you to set up the map make it gorgeous do not put a, a north arrow here but do put a legend give me a title uh, and also and you can just use and you can use the um, you know, if I right click here go to draw like I mentioned before, there it is. You can draw your rectangle there. You can put all your stuff in here. One thing to note, it's going to draw these based on the order in which you added them to the map. So if I uh, really, if, if it's like this where it's disappearing, if I right click on the legend and I go to order and bring either forward or bring to front, It'll draw that on top of this, right? And then however you have this set up, also, I want you to draw a text box in here and give me the uh, projection and coordinate system that you use, okay? However you want to uh, write that. So remember what you did and put that in here and in fact, let's do, okay, do that. Yeah, this will look really cool. And then also, again, however you want to put this in here, but also put data source world bank, you know, to make it look official and make this look nice too. Don't make it look this junky like I did here. Give me a quality map, something that's, that's, really a nice looking thing and using the right projection will show me give me a good idea of who's polluting a lot and who isn't okay once you're done hit save again even if you just did go to file export map okay save it as a pdf uh you know save it in the right place and then upload it to canvas that's what you'll be turning in all right best of luck folks take your time with it any questions, feel free to uh, uh, ask me if you're around the ABC campus. Come on by uh, the office hours I'm holding in the GIS lab or even in my normal ones. I'll, I'll gladly answer questions, help you guys out with this. Um, but in the meantime, have fun with it. Enjoy. And I'm looking forward to seeing your maps.